Hi everybody, this week on my questions and answers for mortgages on my Instagram stories, I got a lot of messages off people asking me what the story was with Ulster Bank and what would happen if they pulled out of the marketplace here in Ireland. So I'll just give a bit of background on this, there's been a lot of news over the last couple of weeks about Ulster Bank exiting after their parent company NetWest have decided to review the Royal Irish operation. Review the Royal Irish operation usually means they're planning on pulling out of the marketplace if you look at what happened to previous banks. Uh, now, First thing to say before I get into what happens is that this will take years. It could take four, five, or even six years to successfully leave the marketplace. They're regulated in the UK, they're regulated in Ireland, and it's not as simple as we're off. <laughs> it has to be done in a very uh, regulated manner. So what will you, what will probably happen is that their business be divided between other banks or it will go to one bank. The main one or there is probably Permit TSB. There's been a lot of speculation over the last 10 years about an amalgamation of Permit TSB and Ulster, Ulster Bank anyways is might advance those talks and um, see what happens there. But ultimately speaking, if you have a current account or a credit card or a savings account, you'll probably just end up in a similar kind of situation with Permit TSB as in your business will be transferred to Permit TSB. If you have a mortgage, it will be the same. Now, the thing to look out for the mortgage is if you have an Ulster Bank, say, two-year fixed rate is 2.3%. When you come off your two-year fixed rate, I'd say Ulster Bank will still be here in two years, but you know what I mean by the example. If you are in permanent TSB when you come off your fixed rate, you'll be then uh, obviously be getting the permanent TSB rate because Ulster Bank will have uh, legged it by that stage uh, if it does go ahead. So just to consider that, but it doesn't really make a difference to anybody. If you're in the middle of a loan offer an AIP, you have nothing to worry about. Uh, I think it will still go ahead because they're going to be here for the foreseeable future. Um, it will take a long time to wind down the operations of the Republic of Ireland. So I think you've nothing to worry about. Now, in saying that, a lot of people don't want this hassle. So if you are going through a loan offer an AIP with Ulster Bank or you were thinking with going with Ulster Bank, maybe looking at someone like KBC, rates are pretty similar, isn't a bad option uh, because you might not want the hassle of your loan going to another lender in the future. They've seen, we've seen this happen in the past where people get letters and they're transferred and it's just an annoyance. There's nothing really to worry about, but it's just it kind of, it melts people's heads. Uh, so if you don't want that and you're thinking of going to uh, Ulster Bank, would this give you enough reason to switch from Ulster Bank to maybe KBC the same rates? Yeah, I think so. I would probably do it if it was me, if I was going for mortgage at the moment. Don't really want the instability of it. I um, don't know what's going to happen in the future. I don't want to be wasting my brain power, basically, wondering whether my mortgage is going to end up in permanent TSB or somewhere else. Uh, in the Sunday Indo this week, we've seen that the LISC uh, CEO uh, mentioned the the situation with Ulster Bank, the list got a massive growth rate. They're doing really, really well in the Irish marketplace for a non-bank lender. Uh, they're part of the OCS group, but um, the list are saying, that's right, the CEO mentioned the Ulster Bank uh, loan book, I suppose. So you'll see people sniffing around the loan book over the next couple of years. Uh, but like I said, if you don't want that hassle, maybe don't go with Ulster Bank. Uh, but if you're in the AP or loan offer stage, you don't actually have anything to worry about. You're going to be around for a good few years, as I said. Um, Again, just to go back for a few examples for people, we've seen this with, uh, was it uh, MBNA years ago, left the Irish market and they gave their business, all the business, the advent card. So you might see a break up of the client or the break up of the accounts that Ulster Bank have. You might see the credit cards going to advent, the current accounts going to PTSB, their deposit rates going, or deposit accounts going to Bank of Ireland and their mortgages going to the list. That could easily happen. It'd be much easier though if it was a merger permit TSB or an outside player came in and took over the whole operation. So, Nothing really to worry about, but if you don't want the hassle, probably don't do mortgage business with them uh, over the next kind of year or two, I suppose, is the main, not recommendation or advice, but just something for you to consider, really. Uh, in other banking news, uh, we would have seen last week as well, uh, Bank of Ireland put up uh, a redundancy to reduce their staffing as well. The reason why you're hearing about a lot of banks in, in the marketplace or in the media over the last couple of weeks is because they're all reviewing their loan books in the back of COVID-19. Bank of Ireland came out looking for 1,400 redundancies. I actually didn't think they'd get the redundancies. I didn't think they'd get the 1,400, but yeah, 1,400 people, I think more than 1,400 people have applied for a redundancy. I thought because people are working from home and because from a banking job point of view, a lot of people can work remotely, that a lot of people would have stayed around, especially in the current environment, it'd be hard to find uh, a job in banking you would have thought. Uh, so I'm surprised they got the 1,400 redundancies, if I'm honest. Uh, but look, it goes to show um, that that people, you know, uh, even in a pandemic, will still take the redundancy lump sum. Now, the, the real reason for that, I suppose, that Bank of Ireland have obviously people with a lot of service, and those redundancies would be quite lucrative to people, and they maybe they're coming to wars or end of their careers, um, and they're thinking maybe, you know, uh, they'll wind down, do consultancy, you know, take a part-time job somewhere, and they, they, they might just take the lump sum while they can get it, uh, which is fair enough. Uh, but look, I hope this video explains about, about uh, Ulster Bank, first and foremost, uh, just sort of throw in about Bank of Ireland, because they have been in the news as well, but this is because 
of COVID-19 and banks reviewing their overall profitability, their processes and trying to keep on as much money as possible, I suppose. Uh, so a sign of things to come. I think you're going to hear more of this in the next six months. Uh, as always, hope this is at a value. Please like and share and tag people you think might want to hear this. Have a great day.